Hello chess friends and welcome to Zara's chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we follow opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we'll talk about the middle game again and today we'll talk about a very important topic. Today we'll talk about how to play attacking chess. This video I think will be the most most important of my videos that I've created in my basics in chess series because here I think you will improve your attacking skills very very much and I think it's maybe even the most most important video that I've created here on my YouTube chess channel. So, uh, but before we talk about the, this uh, attacking ideas, about this attacking possibilities, I wanted to to tell you how I basically create these videos if you have the time to listen basically I uh, play some games and then maybe I have created some double attacks or maybe some discovered attacks in my games then of course I'm thinking about this game uh, because I'm thinking about chess very very much and uh, then I make maybe a video about the double attack so I have already created this double attack in my uh, chess tactics and chess puzzle videos maybe I have pre pre prepared some uh, pre bomb breakthroughs because I have uh, played some pawn breakthroughs then I'm searching for good games that can that can explain this uh, very important principles in chess so that's why that's how I create this video so um, today uh, pardon me yesterday I played a very nice attacking game uh, it was the uh, game I've published uh, today also so I'll show you the link of, at the end of this video and um, it was really a great attacking game so that's why I have prepared this video for you how to play attacking chess so when we play attacking chess these are the most principles that I think uh, you should apply if you want to play attacking chess of course we would love all all of us would love to play like Mikhail Tal but it's not possible but you can really, really sometimes apply Tal's uh, tactics or Tal systems because uh, basically what Tal followed, he, he was really the best tactician in chess history, he followed basically these rules. So, so when we want to play attacking chess, we want to of course move forward. The move forward of pieces is the most important attacking principles because we want to occupy uh, higher rank so it means when we play with the rook it's not the same if the rook is or uh, if the rook is on the sixth rank or on the seventh rank the same with the knight maybe it's not the same if the knight is on the fifth rank or on the sixth rank because on the sixth rank we have really really some attacking possibilities against your opponent's king and so of course uh, you should also do follow uh, the rules of centralization of pieces it means that uh, the pieces are uh, the best placed on uh, centralized square so that's why we should follow really this uh, this very important uh, principles in chess so reposition it's also an attacking move but it's uh, not a direct attack uh, you have to search uh, improvements of pieces when we you have maybe four pieces on the board uh, like maybe two rooks knight and a bishop and you feel your rooks are very well placed and uh, maybe your bishop is also very well placed but your knight is not so good uh, not so well placed so you should really search for the repositions of this knight so you have to participate with all of your pieces in the attack so that's why a reposition of pieces is very very important so uh, when you have an activity with all of your pieces when you have good good activity with uh, maybe your two rooks with your knights with your bishops then uh, you should really search for pawn moves uh, the pawn move can be really, really annoying for your opponent when you have a huge activity but that's uh, possible because uh, your uh, your pieces g are giving you such an activity that the pawn move is basically like a move with a piece so we'll come to that with an ex with a couple with a couple examples so you see what's all about and uh, well what Mikhail Tal also did probably in this in his games he was thinking about uh, of the unthinkable it means sometimes we want to place maybe a rook on on an active square but this uh, square is uh, protected by your opponent and then we give up on that square because we haven't calculated everything it means you should really think to place that rook on that particular square even it uh, even if it seems that uh, it's not so good but you have to calculate if it's really possible to place that rook there if uh, maybe you have some 
other tactical possibilities and then try to try to surprise your opponent because with some deflection or decoy motives i think uh, you can really really uh, punish him because he was uh, too secured your opponent was feeling too secured and he was thinking that no way that is that you're gonna place a piece uh, um, on a square which is very well protected uh, when you get attacked uh, you should uh, if you have to retreat if you have to retreat of course sometimes it's uh, not necessary to retreat with your pieces try to retreat on the best active square so it's not the same if you retreat with the queen on d1 or on d2 maybe on d2 uh, the queen has a much uh, better activity so it's not the same position so and the most most important uh, principle of attacking chess is the possible counterattack. so it means when you get attacked don't retreat first you should really think about attacking moves when you get attacked search for counterattacks. if you do that i think you can improve your rate uh, rating like 400 or 200 points because sometimes when we get at attacked it's also part of uh, chess psychology we just uh, have sort of feeling that we want to retreat but no don't do that first calculate all of this possible counterattack. so let's see now a uh, couple of examples of this very very important principles this will be also a long video i think uh, we will have now uh, many many um, um, many of these principles and the first game that i wanted to show you today it's a game played by david howell against abjet uh, gupta and here we have a position we are uh, uh, beginning with with a light uh, with uh, with not uh, such a hard uh, position here we have an attacking formation of uh, these four pieces so we are searching now for improvements of the position of this piece so of course the rook is uh, not uh, so good well placed but it's hard to improve the position of the rook because if basically the best move of the rook is the move rook on b8 and then maybe an attack uh, to um, um, this pawn on b2 but it's a really little, little bit too slow maybe your opponent can play something like b3 or pr protect this uh, protect this pawn so it's not it's not basically a rook move here so the bishop's activity is of course very powerful it has a very nice activity and the queen's activity is also very very uh, well because uh, here we have a huge activity on the f file what we can do maybe is to place the queen here on uh, f2 this would be a possibility and here maybe your opponent can protect with the move uh, queen on h3 so it's uh, here it's maybe defendable here for for white but white has a bad position anyway and that's what i mean about this think about the unthinkable here in this position uh, the best move is a move forward so what can we do which uh, uh, which piece can we move even further so it's of course the move uh, knight on knight on f1 you see we are moving forward 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 and uh, now um, of course your opponent cannot take this uh, cannot take this um, knight because the knight is protected by the queen but now the knight on f1 has a better activity than it had uh, than, uh, here on on e on, on e3 so that's why here in the continuation white tried to defend but now very nice move queen on h6 and in this position res uh, white resign because if you try something like uh, rook on uh, h5 in order to defend then we have here uh, queen takes rook and then here the fork and it's game over so that was all possible because we we, we were searching for the uh, um, best active move and it was of course an improvement here knight on f1 and it was game over for white so let's see now another example here it's a game played by uh, tigran uh, vartanovic petrosian against uh, mikhail botvinik so it was uh, really um, a great game uh, from the last century here you see we have now all of our pieces in attacking formation so the brooks activity is a huge one this rook is also perf very powerful this bishop is also very powerful this bishop is also very powerful the queen is an attacking shape because it covers uh, some good files good diagonals so when we have this types of position as said if you have a, a huge activity with your pieces you should search for pawn moves and of course the best pawn move here is the move uh, c5 we are now breaking through now the position will get open for all of our pieces it's basically undefendable here here in the continuation uh, 
uh, d5 was played and you can pause the video and try to find the best move here it was a huge huge uh, attack here by by uh, petrosian and as i mentioned also here think of this unthinkable so we are searching now for all of uh, all of the possible uh, tactical moves so here bishop on d5 seems very good because uh, we are gain getting a pawn but it's not so effective uh, you should search for other possibilities here uh, queen on uh, a7 is also possible uh, just getting a pawn but it seems again a little bit too slow we should search now for the best best active moves with a huge attack that your opponent has to resign immediately and now it's to move bishop on d6 so after uh, if you try something like c takes d6 then of course here uh, c takes d6 with a discovered attack on the queen you cannot uh, place your rook there you have to play maybe a queen on d7 and here we can simply take the rook and this is now game over for for black in the continuation uh, uh, queen on uh, e7 was uh, queen on d7 was played and now bishop takes on e7 the queen takes on e7 and again this was game over although many moves were played in the continuation but uh, after a couple of moves uh, mikhail botvinik had to resign so let's see now another example it's very very important now to watch this game this particular game it comes with this idea to play a very powerful counter attack so as said the counter attack in chess is the most important principle of attacking chess so here in the continuation d takes e5 was played it's a game played by gerashimov against vasily smyslov vasily smyslov here with the black pieces so we are getting attacked now the the pawn is attacking the knight <coughs> <coughs> and most of us would maybe retreat with the knight uh, creating maybe a counter attack against this uh, pawn but uh, uh, i think it's uh, again a little bit too slow because your pawn can also play some counter attack ideas with uh, queen on, uh, queen on h5 so that's why we are searching now for immediate counter attack so that's why here queen on c6 creating immediate checkmate threats and uh, this really forces uh, now white to retreat bishop on f1 here again we are playing a counter attack we are not reacting uh, uh, on this attack uh, of whites so we are searching for improvements we want to play on counter attacks forcing our opponent to do something and not allowing the queen to get somehow into the game in the continuation queen on b3 was split and again we're searching for the best active moves now now the best move of course uh, you see we have now huge rook activity uh, this is also good maybe the rook needs improvement rook on c8 but it's now too slow we don't have any counter attacks anymore so that's why knight on g4 again with the counter attack we want of course to uh, attack this uh, h2 pawn now h3 was played and again we're asking ourselves do we have to retreat with the knight of course most of us would play knight on h6 and now the position is much more simplified your opponent can maybe regroup so we don't want to do that so you can pause the video and try to find the best move and of course uh, uh, Vasily Smyslov one of the best chess players in history played simply the move rook on d3 and rook on d3 is this really unthinkable move because if you take uh, with the queen on d3 then you see bishop takes the bishop on h2 uh, you have to play with your king on uh, h1 and now we have the fork on f2 so we're uh, in this position as i mentioned after um, h3 we're searching for all of the uh, possible attacking moves so one of the moves can be of course also uh, bishop on h2 if you play bishop on h2 then your opponent can play uh, king on h1 and you can play be, may play maybe a knight on f2 but now your opponent can take so you see here Vasily Smyslov found a very very nice tactical idea thinking of this unthinkable unbelievable rook sacrifice of course you cannot take also with the bishop because then you get checkmated on g2 so that's why queen on b6 was played and again you can pause the video now the queen is under attack do we have to trade off the queens do we have to retreat no we don't uh, here you can again as i mentioned pause the video and try to find the best tactical move so it's really hard to see but uh, it's an unnatural move it's really, really a breaking through move it's of course rook takes on h3 if you take the queen on c6 then 
bishop take a uh, bishop on h2 king on h1 and then we have checkmate here on f2 if you if you try something like um, in the continuation white tried bishop on d4 uh, and now you have again bishop on h2 uh, and in this position well white resigned because he realized what will happen in the game of course king on h1 has to be played now we have again the discovered attack uh, bishop on e5 king on uh, g1 again bishop on h2 again uh, king on h1 had to be played but now bishop on uh, c7 uh, with the discovered attack and in the next move uh, white will simply lose the queen so as said um, very important stuff here um, let's go back um, it's really the most uh, important uh, game of this video here as mentioned uh, the black got attacked didn't play uh, passively here he played simply on this counter attack uh, queen on c6 we have bishop on f1 now rook on d8 again counter attack now knight on g4 as i mentioned uh, when we get attacked we should search for uh, if we have to retreat you should search for the most active square here it's the, of course knight on g4 now we are again playing on a very powerful attack after h3 we are searching again for for some counter attack possibilities rook on d3 very nice rook queen b6 as i mentioned it here in the disposition white white simply resigned so let's see now another example here um this is now the position of this reposition of pieces uh, as i said when you have maybe a, a good activity with uh, two or three pieces and you're not satisfied with one activity of your one particular piece you should reposition the piece try to find uh, a better spare for this um, for this piece and let's see now which pieces are good which pieces are bad in white's position this rook is very powerful because we have maybe some attacking possibilities uh with the move a5 this rook uh, is an is on a semi-open file and uh, this bishop although it's a little bit blocked out uh by its own pawn pawns but it has a good uh, defensive setup uh, it uh, creates a huge space control on 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 the fifth rank so that's why this bishop is perfectly fine so in when we watch the watch this position uh, it's the knight that needs improvement here so that's why um, i'm sorry i didn't uh, tell you which game it was it was Sieg Siegbert Tarasch against david janowski here Siegbert uh, Tarasch after a5 played knight on f4 of course you see now the reposition of of this piece leads into improved position of the knight and of course we want to place the knight on e6 now rook on uh, e8 was played the uh, knight on uh, e6 now you see the knight became the best piece on the board here we have rook on uh, e7 b4 you see when, uh, as i mentioned when we have a huge activity with our pieces the next move is probably a pawn move so as uh, here i've written it down it for you so it's really important for you to realize that when you have a huge activity with your pieces the next move is probably a pawn move. so it's not always but uh, most of the times you should really try to find the best pawn move so here in the continuation as mentioned b4 a takes b4 now you see we have a, a very nice pawn breakthrough with the move uh, a5 in the continuation bishop on c5 was split and again you see a6 very powerful now after uh, b takes a6 rook takes on a6 now rook on uh, rook on h8 and again here i wanted to pause the video and try to find the best the best move here for four white so as i said uh, we have now again huge activity with our pieces we don't have the possibility uh, to push pawns uh, g4 or h4 doesn't bring you so much so it's now for you to find the best tactical shot here in the continuation of the game so think of this unthinkable try to find the best continuation and of course it's the move rook on c5 because after if you try something like uh d takes c5 then of course knight on c5 and you have to move the king and you get checkmated here on on a8 so that's why um here rook on b8 had to be played but now rook takes on uh, c7 we have uh, a king on e8 and now rook takes on e7 king takes on e7 now rook on uh, a7 king on e8 and now bishop on f3 and in this position uh 
uh, black resigned because in the next move you simply lose the spawn and uh, here we have also checkmate threat so it was game over here for david janowski so again uh, in this position i want to, to point you out again uh, this improvement of p uh, of the position of this pieces is very important to realize because these two pieces are in th on this best uh, in the best attacking formation so that's why this bishop uh, to f3 has to come to you uh, is, uh, as a natural move and uh, it has to be seen immediately uh, if you want to really have a good good attack and continuation here in this game so let's see now uh, another example it's a game played by van Gyu against uh, simen uh, adgestein um you see we uh, in the game queen, uh, queen on f6 was played by black and uh, here of course now it's the move f4 we want to support this huge activity of this knight in the continuation rook on d4 was played uh, as said uh, the pawn is now uh, really attacked so see, we should search now for some counter attacks do we have counter attacks i think in this position we don't have uh, counter attacks possibility so that's why you should really defend this uh, defend this pawn so but in the continuation here um a6 was played now we have knight on c6 uh, with an attack now we played on the counter attack here rook takes on um, uh, e4 was played queen takes on f6 rook takes on e1 with uh, with the check rook takes on e1 and now rook takes on f6 now we have this position in which we have a huge huge activity uh, with these two pieces uh, with this rook so when we have that the next move is probably a pawn move and you should really search for the best pawn move here and of course it's the move a5 if you take uh, b takes a5 then we have um, uh, b6 if you move um, maybe the, uh, the knight somewhere then we have rook takes on e6 after uh, bishop uh, rook takes on e6 then bishop on d5 you have to uh, bring the king here and now we have knight on d8 so a takes b6 was played here uh, after a5 a, knight takes on b5 here we have a takes b6 knight on d6 and again the same tactical idea uh here rook takes um, on e6 bishop on d5 and again the same uh, the same idea happened here bishop takes on c4 in this position uh black resign because if you capture the bishop then uh, this pawn is unstoppable for the knight so let's see now another example it's a game played by uh, Veselin Topalov against um, uh, Magnus Carlsen and uh, in the last move here uh, Magnus Carlsen played the move G takes F5 so first of all uh, you should uh, consider the option to take to take this uh, pawn but of course uh, Mag uh, Veselin Topalov is really also a great tactician he didn't play here immediately knight takes on f5 or e takes f5 he played first the counter attack so when we get attacked as i mentioned try to find counter attack possibilities here in the continuation Veselin Topalov found the move queen on a5 the, it's really an improvement of the position because now we have uh, the possibilities to create a check on d8 and also a check on, on d5 in the continuation queen on e7 was played um, queen on d5 and now a uh, bishop on e6 so you should stop should we retreat uh, with the queen and where to retreat if we retreat of course if you place you see now uh, you should search for the best square for the queen uh, now the idea is if we want to play maybe queen on d2 or queen on queen on d1 which is which square is better so of course the better square is a queen on d1 because you have now a decisive connection with the rook uh, because now we can play something like queen on h5 and we can also uh, can um, attack uh, with the queen and the rook on the g and h file here uh, queen on g7 was played and again we are attacked should we really uh, retreat with the knight on sure should we really play some counter-attack possibility and the vessel topalov of course a great great chess player finds the move e takes f5 uh, of course if you take uh, the knight then rook on g1 so that's the art of this attacking chess uh, never retreat try to find counter-attack possibilities d e takes f5 was played bishop on f7 and now knight on e4 king on f8 the threat was of course to play uh, rook on g1 king on f8 now knight on d6 taking another pawn uh, king on e7 knight takes on b7 you see 
Magnus Carlsen's position is falling apart. We have also now some immediate checkmate threats on, on d8. That's why uh, Queen on g8 was played. Queen on d2. Now we improve the position of the Queen with some check possibilities. Maybe here on b4. Uh, that's why Rook on b6. And now again a counter attack. You see Veselin Topalov is not reacting here. He played very actively. Uh, you cannot take this knight immediately. Queen on c8 had to be played. And now knight on d6 uh, with a fork on on the knight uh, on the queen and the bishop here uh, queen on d7 split knight takes on f7 queen takes on d2 here uh, queen takes on d2 king on f7 and now uh, c4 king on e7 king on c3 and in this position magnus Carlsen resigned because here we can create a position which we, we will have two connected pass pawns so magnus carson of course a great chess player realized that it's really losing losing here it's a losing end game for him that's why he correctly resigned here so let's see now another example this is also a very very important uh, game that uh, uh, applies this attacking possibilities again we are evaluating our pieces by the activity so First of all, uh, here bishop on b5 was played by Michael Adams. Um, he was playing here against uh, Sergio van der Waren. Uh, of course, first uh, preventing your opponent from castling. Here king on f8 was played. And now we are uh, again evaluating our pieces. This rook is uh, maybe needs improvement, but it can be only improved if we somehow open the, the a file. This bishop is perfectly fine. This queen is uh, very well placed. It's centralized. Maybe it can be improved. Maybe through b3 or uh, similar ideas. But uh, the worst uh, piece on the board is this knight. Knight on f3. So that's why this knight really needs improvement. So that's why here first rook on c2 was played. Uh, we are trying, as I mentioned, to improve here this rook. Uh, because this rook needs improvement. I think this a4, a5 idea would have been too slow so that's why rook on c2 perfectly fine rook on c8 rook takes on c8 bishop takes on c8 and now you see now this rook gets into the game very actively it comes out with the tempo here uh, bishop on b7 was split and now knight on e1 as i mentioned these three pieces are perfectly fine this knight wasn't good uh, here on, uh, on f3 so that's why it needs improvement maybe we're searching for some knight on three d3 ideas and of course we want to kick away this knight with the move f3 f6 was played f3 you see knight on g5 and now knight on d3 uh, if you take then of course here you see we, we would have a very well placed knight on on um on e5 so that's why after uh knight on d3 knight on f7 was played and now e takes f7 which have g takes f7 and now knight on f4 you see now this knight that was on f3 and was the worst piece on the board it becomes the best piece on the board here uh, uh black tried e5 and again i uh, you should really search for counter attack possibilities so most of us would maybe retreat again to d3 here uh, you should pause the video and try to best counter-attack move so when we uh, never retreat first calculate this counter-attack possibilities of course the best move is rook on c7 if you take of course the, uh, then we have the fork on e6 so you see this activity of the knight was decisive so that's why this uh, rook on c7 was possible queen on d6 and now rook takes uh, on um, b7 in this position uh, black resigned because if you try something like uh, e takes uh, d t e takes f4 then of course we have uh, queen on queen on e8 and this is game over now for white for black pardon me uh, so as mentioned these are the most important principles of attacking chess uh, move forward the uh, reposition of pieces if you have uh, maybe two pieces that are good search for the improvement of the piece uh, for this third piece because you need all of the pieces in the attack when you get a huge activity probably uh, the, uh, when you have a huge activity with your uh, all of your pieces probably the next move is a pawn move when uh, thinking of this unthinkable is really sometimes hard to realize in chess because uh, uh, we are we get something sometimes too scared of this attacking possibilities of this tactical calculations try to see all of that and as i also mentioned counter attack the counter attack counter attack counter attack is the most important principles of attacking chess never treat of course 
you have to sometimes retreat but never retreat if you haven't calculated all of the uh, calculated all of the possible uh, tactical lines because maybe you missed some counter-attack possibilities you see in this game also by michael adams he was attacked but no he found this rook on uh, rook on c7 idea and won the game very very easily okay i hope it wasn't too much for you and i hope also that you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other basics in chess videos with some with some other opening principles middle game strategies and the end game strategies and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles videos if you want to see all of this possible tactical uh, tactical um, motifs that can happen in the chess games and you can also watch my how to spot chess tactics videos in which i show you um, um, an effective way how to see tactical possibilities in your own games and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course